Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. I am very excited to be coming in today. I have some really exciting stories and a very exciting topic to share with you. Let me get into Instagram as well to welcome some people here. Hello, everybody. So uh, this week's topic of Mind Body TV uh, is something I've actually been um, playing with for a while over a year since I encountered this uh, individual's work. Um, and I'm really, really excited to bring this kind of format to the equation of what we're doing with mind body healing. So it's called the inner game of healing. I recently met Tim Galway, who is the international best-selling author of the inner game of tennis, uh, and subsequently the inner game of golf, the inner game of stress, uh, and some other books as well, and has established kind of a whole teaching around this, opening up to this inner self to allow more power, more possibility, skill you didn't even know you had, and allow so many things to happen in your life. I have recently um, been trying to get better at tennis, and I read his book about a year ago because my tennis coach recommended this book. And when I read it, I was full lord because this was like, whoa, this is everything I'm bringing to the table with the inner game of medicine, so to speak, the inner game of healing in my work in mind body medicine, like everything he was sharing about what, how we're accessing this, this inner power and this like untapped talent. It's exactly, exactly what I've sort of been aware of, of what allows us to heal. And from that time, I was really, really excited to meet Tim. And uh, I'm going to share the story of how that happened and guide you through what is the inner game of healing and how do you ignite this within yourself. So I would love to hear where you're joining from and welcome. We have someone from Montreal and Facebook. Hi from England. Karen from San Francisco. Hello. I'm going to give a couple minutes to make sure these comments are coming through. I know my daughter is going to be here today as well. Gemma Jam. Hello from South Carolina. Awesome. Greetings from Africa. Welcome here on in Instagram. That is very exciting. Hello, everybody. Awesome. Great to see you guys. Hi from India. Lorca from Los Angeles, Joanne from Netherlands. Awesome. Dennis from Montreal. Hello. Jaria from Vancouver. Lakama from New Mexico. Vibe from Sweden. Alan also from Sweden. Someone in Facebook from Nevada. Fatima from South Africa. Leticia from Brazil. So exciting. Joe from UK. Samantha from New Jersey. Awesome. California, Salem, South Carolina. Holly, good morning from beautiful BC, Canada. So grateful to be here with you. Awesome. Scottsdale, Toronto, UK, Netherlands. Oh, so exciting. All right. It's so great to see you guys. I am here from uh, Durango, Colorado. Very exciting to be here today. So the inner game of healing. So I um, have been wanting to connect with Tim Galway. I was like, we've got to meet, we've got to have a conversation. This is unbelievable how much the work is aligned and how much he's kind of like having the same really profound awareness and seeing unthinkable things. So I've known for a long time, um, you know, when you understand that the mind and body are connected, you understand our thoughts affect our physiology and what's happening in our body. You understand that, you know, when you play tennis, if you go up to the court like, oh my God, I hope I don't lose. Oh God, I'm so bad. Why did I serve like that? It's gonna actually keep bringing your game down. It's gonna keep limiting you. And vice versa, when you go to the game with, I'm gonna do awesome, I'm amazing, it's okay to, to do what I'm doing, uh, you'll have a whole different result. But the thing I've seen with like the inner game of healing is it's not about being positive. It's not about, I'm gonna heal my body, it's all okay. And sort of like putting ice cream on top of poop where you actually don't feel that way at all. And this is what Tim um, discovered with the, the inner game of tennis was like, it wasn't about be positive, think you're gonna win and you'll win. So we do know our thoughts affect what's happening. It's gonna change the way you hit the ball. It's gonna change the way you heal your liver. 
But what he found, which is exactly the same thing as what I found, is it's not about trying to put a new program in there. It's actually about being aware of what's happening in me. So when he would have people um, come to the court and just, hey, where's your racket at contact with the ball? Is it in front of you? Is it in back of you? Is it right out to the side? Um, he got really, really limited by trying to tell people, hit, you know, make your point of contact with the racket out in front of you or bring your racket lower and then, you know, pronate your arm as you hit the ball. And he's trying so hard to teach people who was this amazing t tennis player and they weren't getting any better. And he realized, let me try harder. Let me try it. And I think of new techniques of what I can tell them but it actually wasn't creating the results he wanted. And he got to this like really downtrodden place of like, what is it gonna take for me to actually see people get better? And what he found was when he would guide people to just be aware of what was happening in them, not to do it right or not do it wrong, but to just be aware of what was showing up, they got better. Like learning happen in their system, hitting the ball improved. So the intention is I'm going to hit the ball over the net into the other side in the court and then letting go of everything else and letting the body learn and letting the body do. So it wasn't about putting a new program in. I'm going to do great at tennis. I'm going to, this is going to happen today because that's still attachment and it would contract the system. It would create tension in their bodies and it would limit their performance. This is exactly what I've seen with healing. And that's why my practice is not about like positive reinforcement, positive thinking. If you think you can, you can. If you think you're healthy, you'll heal. Um, in a way, there's some truth to that. But the way most people use it is in attachment. It's not actually in allowing. And the entire foundation of my practice has been in increasing your awareness because that is what I've seen change the whole game and have massive healing happen. In fact, in my embracing health program where I work with people live, this is the number one thing I'm bringing them is to be more aware of what they're feeling, what they're sensing and what's happening in their body, not less. Everything in medicine in conventional medicine is about like feeling it less, feeling your pain less, feeling the depression less, but that will actually just keep you in a never ending cycle of continually needing more medicine, more support, more therapy, more tools, more going, more overcoming. It doesn't actually create healing. And so in Tim's model, we have self one and self two. Self one comes to the court. I wanna win. I wanna be the best tennis player. I wanna be awesome. I'm gonna hit that ball. I'm gonna do what I learned. And all self one can actually do is create more tension in the system, like attachment, right? Oh, I feel so good. I hit that ball. Oh God, I can't believe I did it like that. Why did I do it like that? You're going to feel good or you're going to feel bad because of what happened. Self two is a whole different dimension and I'm in non-attachment. And this is where the genius or what I call the wisdom, the body's wisdom comes in. When we let go of the outcome, self two can simply come in and learn, learn how, you know, there's like a million things going on. How is my wrist pronated? How much tension is in my hand when I'm holding the racket? How much, what's happening in my shoulder? Am I raising my shoulder? Am I lowering my shoulder? What's the position of my hand in space when I contact the ball? There's like so many billions of bits of information. Self two could never micromanage all of it. And if you've ever tried to play tennis, you realize the more you try to micromanage it, the more you screw up and just like keep hitting it in the net or keep hitting it over. What am I doing wrong? Because self one thinks I need to figure it out. The real power comes when self one surrenders to self two. And I tell people when I work with them privately or in the Embracing Health group, there's really only one thing self one can do and it's to surrender to self too, to leave it to the manager, to soften the body, relax, let go, and let the thing happen. So what he has seen is when he uh, asks a question like, um, how comfortable are you feeling? I'll just ask you guys right now, how comfortable are you feeling in your seat right now? This is one of the things he shared with me when I got to meet with him. How comfortable are you feeling in your seat? 
tune into that, right? There's no right or wrong. There's not, are your shoulders relaxed as they should be? Or try to relax your shoulders more. There's just, how comfortable are you feeling? On a scale of one to 10, how much tension is in your body? How much tension is in your neck? Are you having pain? Are you noticing how much pain in your shoulders? And you can simply report that or check in, hey body, what's going on? Awareness. And when he would use this, he would find self two gets ignited, learning happens, performance happens at a vastly accelerated rate. And this is exactly what I've seen with healing. Like when we let go and just connect with awareness, what am I feeling in my body right now? On a scale of one to 10, where's my anxiety level right now? And we become adept at noticing that that actually creates a massive shift in our body because now self one has a job, open awareness, curiosity. And I, I did a great episode on mind body TV a few months back. that was just all about using curiosity as a way to heal. This is what we're tapping into. So I wanted to, uh, to meet with Tim. I was so excited, but I had no idea how to connect with him. Uh, I had reached out to his team. I hadn't heard back. And I was so excited about this. I was like, this is going to happen. And a couple of days later, I was on my Awakened Practitioner group, sharing in the group call that we have in there. And I was sharing this example about self one, self two. Self one's the one, like the ego, the attachment. I've got to help my patient heal. Self two is the one that actually lets the healing happen and the patient heals. How do we tap into and activate self too? I brought up Tim Galway. I brought up his work. I said, I want to meet him so bad. I know it's going to happen. I have no idea how I, you know, I reached out to his team, but I know it's going to happen. And I got a message back from a woman in my group who said, Tim Galway is my uncle. And I was like speechless. What? Are you kidding me? This guy's like a multi international bestseller. I don't even know where he lives. And it's her uncle. So it was like three days later, we got to meet and there are some really incredible nuggets that Tim shared. And I'm going to share some of these things with you. Um, one of the things I thought was most remarkable is, you know, the ego wants to take credit. And this is where I see so many people trying to heal themselves. I did this for years. It just made my illness worse and worse and worse and worse and more complicated and more layered. And there was like more work to be done. And when I finally surrendered it to self too, like what's right about this, I'm not getting. I let something happen. I let insight come instead of trying to fix the problem. That's why I'll tell everyone who works with me, let go of the intention. I want to do this to get better. I'm going to do this to get out of pain. Actually put your intention on, I'm going to be more fully alive. I choose to be more fully alive. I choose to be more self-embodied. I choose to love myself fully choose to accept what's here now because a hundred percent of the time i've seen that what that creates is healing is getting out of pain is completely dissolving anxiety and depression and when he started teaching this way um people would just get better and have this like amazing skill and play tennis and like kick butt and be a whole different player and he said geez i wish i had taught him something so i could take credit for this <laughs> Because the ego thinks like, I'm the teacher, I'm supposed to tell you what to do. And then if you get better, cred to me. <laughs> but what he realized was that that's not actually what's happening. Do I want to be the teacher or do I want to help this guy be a better tennis player? And so for me as a physician, I, I had to get my ego out of the equation a long time ago. This is not about me healing you. This is not about me teaching you. This is about me assisting you in accessing the wholeness that's already within you. Totally different game. Um, so thanks, you guys, for, for being here. I don't know if any of you have even heard of Tim Galway yet but I have had such a, an exciting time with this work. So get yourself out of the equation. These are kind of like the three main things. Um, get yourself out of the equation, meaning you're not healing yourself. 
You do not need to heal yourself. You didn't design your liver, your kidney, and your spleen, and you sure the heck don't need to know how to fix your liver, your kidney, and, a, and your spleen. So if the game of self-healing ends up being like a big cluster or you feel like you're pushing a boulder uphill, you can surrender that path today. I'll give you full permission to surrender that path completely because you are not here to heal yourself. So number two is there is the wisdom in you that can do amazing things. Even when I read his book and started practicing this, I, I, I practicing this, I became a way better tennis player. And I would like focus on the seams, right? You see the ball coming toward you and you're like, how wide are the seams? Got to give self one a job because self one's going to be like, I got to hit it right. Put my racket here. Am I doing this? Oh, I hope I don't screw this up. No, don't put self one to trying to do anything. Just tap awareness. How do I feel in my body right now? How light do I feel in my body from a scale of one to 10? So that's the focusing on the seams. I'm going to, I'm going to watch this ball come by and I'm going to have self one. Just notice how thick are the seams? right? Meanwhile, self two is taking over and hitting that forehand exactly as it needs to happen. Yes, hold your intention for what you're asking yourself to do. I'm going to hit this right over the net and into the other side of the court. But beyond that, let go of all of it. So maybe your intention for healing is, um, I feel free. I feel whole. I feel joy. I'm fully alive, enjoying all the things I love to do, okay? Or maybe a little mini form of that. I feel whole and complete. I feel fully alive. That's enough. Let go. And then put your self one, which is like the ego self, the mind, the programs, to the task. How relaxed do I feel in my body right now on a scale of one to 10? And then I'd love you to share that with me. And then I'd love you to look into, okay, if there was one in me who did know and the space from which my body was created and I'm here and I'm breathing, if there was this one, what would it take for me to feel even healthier, for me to heal this disease, for me to resolve this pain? What would it take? Okay, so on a scale of one to 10, how much tension would there be in my shoulders? If I were whole and complete, living my ideal life, feeling awesome, healthy, alive, how much tension would be in my shoulders? And then just let that in. Oh, I'd probably have like two, hardly any tension at all. And I'm not saying your body will register this now. I'm saying let it into your awareness. How much digestion would be going on right now as I sit here listening to this video or this podcast on a scale of one to 10, how much digestion would be ignited? If I were whole and complete living my highest possibility of life and my greatest space of confidence and love and acceptance, how would the breath be moving through my body? Would it be moving all the way through to my pelvis? How much on a scale of one to 10? How light would I feel? So all you're doing is playing with the what if, I'm not asking you to actually physicalize this right now. Just let the awareness in. These are all really powerful ways to let self to start to do its job because there is one in you who does know how to heal your liver, your kidney, your spleen, your blood, your headaches, your period, menstruation, uh, fill in the blank with what, you know, your fatigue there is. And if you're not accessing it, it's a hundred percent of the time. What I've seen as a physician is we are busy up to the act of engaging self one so hard. The program, oh, I just have to work harder. Oh, maybe I read, I need a better book. Oh, maybe it's my diet. Let me micromanage my diet. If I just figure my diet out, self one could stay busy 24 seven for the entire span of your life and get nothing actually done. <laughs> get nothing done as far as like actually letting healing happen. This was the exact thing I saw for me that allowed everything to change.
Awesome, you guys. I'm really glad to see everybody here. All right, so Joe, one tension, living whole and complete. Yes, level one, how much tension you'd have if I'm living whole and complete. Breath is light, deep, meaning it's running right through me. Good. So only that awareness. Don't try to do it in your body. Just like I didn't try to have my forehand contact at the right spot when I hit the ball. I just looked at, oh, I'm going to just notice where is my racket contacting the ball? Is it here? Is it here? I'm going to notice how thick are the seams. I'm going to notice where's the exact spot the ball bounced. Just awareness. How am I feeling? Right now on a scale of one to 10, how light am I feeling? How much joy am I feeling? How much tension am I feeling? Good, Regina, surrender seems like pushing the boulder. <laughs> so don't try to surrender. Just ask, what would I feel like if I were in full surrender? Awesome. Would it be related to having faith? In a way, yes, you could think of it like that. I don't really like to think of it like that because then it seems like it's something outside of me versus trust my knowing. There's a part of me that does know. There's more to this. There's more I'm, I'm capable of in my life than maybe what I'm experiencing right now. There's more that's possible. So feel into that. What if there's more that's possible? Do you know on some level? That there's more possible for me. That's what I would begin to ask, especially like when the uh, the rheumatologist told me, well, you're going to have this disease for the rest of your life. You're going to have to take these medicines for the rest of your life. You're going to be in pain for the rest of your life. You won't be able to run again. And I was like, oh, I felt like I was about to die. It felt so heavy and hopeless. And I realized, wait a minute. <laughs> what if this isn't true? Jennifer asks, how come people living in self one get relief, finding the right supplement, the right medication? Great question. Yes, you will. You may. And it will always be temporary. And you will always keep requiring that thing, which will get, if and, unless it's actually really aligned, like, boom, this is easy. Then, then it's self two, <laughs> right? Like, what's going to be the easy thing here? Oh, I'll take my homeopathic remedy. Whoa, that really did so much for me right? I chose for my wisdom. But if I'm in self one, let me fix it. Oh, if I just get that medication, if I just get that remedy, if I just tighten up my diet, it will always be limited and it will always get heavier. Meaning now the medication has more side effects or, oh, now I need more of that medication because it's not working. Now I need more of it to make it work. Or, oh, I'm just restricting my diet, but now I can't go out with my friends. And that's not awesome. <laughs> you'll feel the temporary self one fix will always be limited. And that was certainly true for me. Like sometimes my chronic fatigue would resolve, but I always feel like <gasps> I hope it doesn't come back and it will come back. <laughs> so the devastation, these other underlying energies were still there because I was just trying to avoid them. Good. Joe from a three to a four. Would it be, Letitia, would it be related to, oh, I looked at that already, having faith. So yeah, having faith is like, for me, I know there's this wisdom in me. I know it's true. I feel it. I'm aware of it. And I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose to ignite that. I'm going to choose to allow that. I'm going to choose to remember that when I'm spinning my wheels, trying to solve a problem. <laughs> Wait, oh, what if I let this go? Leave it over to the manager. What if I let this go? What if this could take care of itself? What if this could be easy for me? So I'll do this by asking better questions. This is one of the tools in my book, the Mind Body Toolkit, Ask Better Questions. Really great way to hand it over to self too. Okay, awesome. Oh, uh, Dennis, I bought the program for chronic fatigue syndrome. I have MS and watch video two and four again and again and again. And I'm starting to feel, wow, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I'll share the link for that. It's at drkimd.com forward slash CF. Awesome. So does that mean we're not already whole and complete? It means you're already whole and complete. <laughs> but when we work at it as if we're not, we won't experience completion, wholeness, peace, 
will experience the fear, will experience the lack, will experience disease, will experience being broken in like a thousand different ways. Is this applicable to phobias? Yes, yes, yes. So feel into the one. Oh, this is so crazy because we've seen this so much in clinical medicine. Um, for example, with like multiple personality, right? Multiple personality, one personality maybe has this phobia, the other personality doesn't. One personality is a brittle diabetic, meaning they don't have the ability to metabolize glucose. The other personality, absolutely no problem with sugar whatsoever, and they can metabolize glucose. They don't have diabetes. This is one of the most striking things I've seen in medicine because A, most doctors think you can't cure diabetes and that it either is a condition in your system, it's a physical thing, or it's not. But then you see this one person, one physical body, and multiple personalities, and one personality has severe diabetes type one, and the other one doesn't. You're like, whoa, how did they turn on the pancreas and start secreting insulin in this other mind? So what we see is there's a being that will live in us, right? I'm either in the being of, oh no, I'm not okay, I'm not good enough, I'm scared, I don't like people, maybe I have a phobia, maybe I'm quiet and introverted, and then I can bump into a whole other way of being. I'm whole and complete, I express myself fully, and all is well. And that shifts your physiology? Yes. So I would invite you to welcome in what if I didn't have this phobia? What if I were totally at peace? I'm not asking you to be there. I'm asking you to just look. If I were totally at peace with this thing that's been a phobia, how deeply would I be breathing in my body? How much joy would I have in this moment? How much tension would there be in my shoulders? The one who is at peace, the one who is free from this phobia, how would she feel? And notice and look, see if you can start to become aware. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking that. Um, oh, hold on a second. I mean, we're not already whole and complete. <laughs> We are already whole and complete, which is why, what if I access the part of me who does know? Yes, notice, excellent word. As a fan of Galway's work, having used his technique in tennis, it seems you could practice this way of being in other games and sports. Yeah, 100%. He, um, we could actually feel and see results, then re apply it to healing pain and illness. Seems the ego ramps up in more fear-based situations. That's what I've seen 100% of the time in people trying to heal a disease. They're in fear, trying to avoid an escape, and then they get to the work of fixing, changing, improving, and that's always gonna be limited. And I'm not saying like, you won't find something that helps. I'm saying it will be temporary, it will be limited, it will, be, it will get heavier as you go forward, meaning more side effects, or it's just harder to do, or you're like, well, this is actually expensive, this is not fluid for me, because there's something higher. How do I make this a daily practice? I am so glad you asked. So that's kind of the third thing that I wanted to share is who am I being in this moment? And for me, I have been living from awareness for, for, for such a long time or as, as a fulcrum, as a go-to, uh, going to awareness when I feel uncomfortable, when I notice I'm snarky, when I'm not happy with what's going on. I'm like, okay, where am I breathing? Where am I breathing in my body? And for me, I would kind of slow and deepen my breath, but just the awareness of where am I breathing in my body? How would I breathing if how would I be breathing if I were filled with unthinkable joy and gratitude? How would I be breathing in my body if that thing I've been wanting to happen happens? How would I feel in my body if the most incredible, extraordinary, unthinkable thing? We're happening right now. And then I'll take 10 breaths into that. I would, this is exactly what Galway shared. He said to one of the guys who just couldn't seem to get his backhand right, couldn't seem to get his game going. I've had 12 different tennis coaches. And he said, well, show me how you do want to play. Like when we're done here, <clears throat> how, how would you like to be hitting the ball someday? 
And he goes, oh, I would, I'd like to hit it like this. And he started whacking it and hitting it and nailing it and spinning it, doing like exactly this like incredible game. And there were people watching and they're laughing because we're like, oh, like, and you can't do that now. And that's exactly what I'm talking about is that you are already whole and complete. And there is this wisdom in you. What would it take to access even some of it right now? Even 2% of it right now. So that's the practice I do whenever I'm looking for expansion in my life is how would I be, feel, breathe in this moment where it is happening, where I am there, where, where this is my experience? Because your cells have memory. And they're either playing over and over and over the records of, I'm sick, I'm miserable, why am I so tired? what's wrong with me, right? And that's what I was asking in the two years where I developed an autoimmune illness that kept getting worse as I tried to heal. What's wrong with me? So we're either up to the task of creating that or we're up to the task of handing it over to the wisdom, activating self too. What would I breathe like? How would I feel in this moment if the extraordinary and unthinkable we're happening right now. And then just take 10 breaths right there. Now, I'm not asking you to do it right. I'm asking you to ask the question and just be aware of what that would be. That's enough to ignite unthinkable change in your body. <laughs> Joe said, yes, I mentally decided to no longer renew my medication. And when I did telephone for a repeat prescription, I was told, no, I need to have a review. And I laughed. <laughs> well, feel into what feels fluid for you. And I'm not going to tell anybody like, just go off your medication. It's no big deal. It can be a huge deal because your physiology can become dependent on many of the medications that people have been put on chronically. Um, so work with a doctor, you know, or, or what feels light to you. Um, but you want to look what's going to serve me the most, what's going to create the highest and best for me. It may be a medication. It may be not a medication, but you won't know until you look, until you get curious. And just like Tim has discovered, developing the connection with your awareness is kind of the magic thing that allows so much more possibility to happen. Um, so I could ask my ego to relax my shoulders. Yes. Well, you can ask your ego, what would it feel like if your shoulders were relaxed? Because really sometimes even like relax your shoulders. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh, they're just not relaxing. Right. See how it's a little like I'm doing it right. I'm doing it wrong. So make it even easier. What would it feel like if I were fully relaxed? Mm -hmm. Oh, how is this different? From Gupta, Irene Lyon, EFT, I'm not really familiar with them, EMDR, DNRS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've done all of these. I sense I need it, some one-on-one -on -one work. Reading isn't cutting it. This is why I'm doing the work I'm doing. It's because when I use even the best stuff that's out there from Self One, Self One wants to fix, right? I gotta fix it, I gotta change it. Ah, oh, it's just not okay, it's not better. Whenever someone says, it's not working, they're always in Self One. Self one has an agenda. Self one has judgment. Self one has attachment. <sighs> self two is beyond all of it. I embrace what is as it is. And one of the things, and I've gone a lot more into this in the Embracing Health program. Um, there's some videos right up front when you come into the program. We have open that. It'll be open in May. It starts in June, but this is where I work with people live. One of the big things that there's a very first video is how to activate self two. Now, I didn't call it self one, self two. I have a different framework, but it's exactly what Tim is uh, making reference to in his work. How do we activate the one who does know, the one who heals the body, the infinite self? How do we activate, how do we connect with that aspect of self? And pretty much everyone who's come to that work has done like, done this and I've done that and I've tried this and I've tried that. It's not working. And that's where I was as well. So what's the difference between allowing healing to happen 
and trying to heal myself. It's an entire universe of difference. One always creates, instantly creates new possibilities. And the other just keeps my wheels spinning, thinking I'm creating a new possibility, but never actually getting there. As with the seams of the ball, what are some specific points of focus to hand self one while allowing healing? Okay, great question. So what I do is how deeply through my body and my breathing and now feel my pelvis. I'll bring my awareness down to my pelvis because I'll notice like, is there breath coming here? As soon as I bring my awareness, more breath starts to flow there. So just start with a simple like, how much breath is moving through my body? Scale one to 10. Because one is like <laughs> tension in the shoulders. It's, air's not really flowing. Maybe it's just the upper lungs, not really the lower lung fields. Just notice. How much breath is moving through my body? Scale of one to 10. And then the second piece I like to do is if I were whole and complete in the total knowing of my power, my magnificence, living in the highest possibility for me, how much breath would be flowing through my body? And then just awareness, oh, would it be a 10? Oh yeah, it'd be a 10. Just let that in, that's it. Another great um, focus on the seams point for healing. What else is possible? Whatever is coming up for me, right? Because the ego will contract around it. Oh no, why am I feeling this? I had a friend say to me yesterday, well, I had an energy healer look at me and she told me I was under psychic attack. I was like, oh no, that is so not what's happening in your system at all. But she moved through it, it helped her move through it and there she is. But next time that energy comes up, she's gotta go back to the energy healer who hopefully is available and understands and sees what she's talking about and can release it. And now it's this out, outside thing I'm like dependent on because I haven't been willing and able to meet those energies fully. So for me, I will lean into them I'll feel what's coming up, right? So, so maybe even as simple as um, how intense is this? Scale of one to 10. 10 is like, oh, I'm completely horrified. And one is like, you know, just noticing minor disturbance. How intense is what's coming up now? Sometimes I'm in such an intense energy. I'm like, whoa, this is mega. This is like a 10 out of 10. And I'll just notice it and breathe in and breathe out. And that is enough to let it shift. Like, whoa, something as simple as that. So stay curious instead of staying in the conclusion. Oh, this is my chronic fatigue. Oh, God, what do I do about my chronic fatigue? You're actually physicalizing it. You don't need to do that. So those are some really great possibilities. And then the, the other one I shared, what else is possible here? I'm under psychic attack. Mm, is that true for me? What else is possible? Because it might start to, you'll notice that it starts to feel heavy when someone tells you, oh, it's because you have blah, 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 blah syndrome. And you're like, oh, that sucks. So feeling light, heavy. It's another game I play very often. Is this true for me? What else is possible? What if actually has nothing to do with what a practitioner has told me, right? Because they told me, this is what you have in your body. This is your disease. This is how it's going to go. And I basically asked, is this true for me? And then just feel into heavier light. You'll feel it as you practice because it always feels heavy to buy into a lie and it always feels light to receive the truth. This isn't even true for me. This is his perspective. Awesome. He can have it. It's not true for me. What else is possible here? And what would it be like for me to allow that? So that's what you can play with right now to mm -hmm. <laughs> let more in. Hi, Gemma. <laughs> awesome. What I've never understood about embracing and letting go is why should we do any program then? You know, like I feel like I spent years accepting in bed isn't how we find self two and one 
<laughs> Wait, hold on. How we and watching these videos still efforting? No. That's a great, great question. Yes, I will tell you. If you're like, <gasps> I gotta get my fix. Let me watch that video. Or oh, I don't want to feel what I'm feeling. Let me go to that course. It will fix me. Then absolutely let it go. My work is a hundred percent designed to like not satisfy that. So basically, people will come here who are trying to get a fix. And there's nothing to sink your teeth into, <laughs> right? Because I'm not going to give you a fix. I'm not going to buy into the delusion that there's something wrong with you under any circumstances. And I'm not going to help you avoid what you're feeling. So self one will ultimately be like, eh, shouldn't know what she's talking about and get out of here. So anyone who's actually committed to like keeping the rat race going, I'm going to get there. I know self one can do it. Like Tim Galway shared, he said, um, he got to like his wits end of like, where am I going in life? It's not working for me. He said, I got to all the limits of what self one had to offer. And he went to a minister and was like, I need you to help me. And the guy said, you don't need me. You need a savior. And, and it seemed like a real pinnacle moment in his life where he realized like, what else is possible here beyond what I already know and what I already can do or can't do and can develop or can't develop. What else could I let in? So I always tell people, if this resonates with you, absolutely choose it. If it doesn't, honor that. Self one can't know, right? Self one's like, I gotta do the thing. You know, that's why people use fear-based marketing. You know, um, if you don't do this, you're gonna suffer for the rest of your life. <laughs> or like um, falsified urgency. Oh my God, I can't even believe. So, you know, we'll start a program at a certain time and we let people know like, hey, you know, we're going to start our live call is this day and here's our last day. But falsified urgency is where I don't trust that your inner self knows how to choose wisely for you. So I like falsify like there's only a few spots left or when there actually aren't. Or um, I've had people I know who did this and I, I just wanted to throw up because I realized how can you say you're like a spiritual teacher and then you use these little hooks and like manipulation mechanisms because you're betting that the person doesn't have wisdom to a feel you out and b know the difference of what's right for them so the way i've chosen to do my work is like you either align with the truth in you and you can feel me and you can choose or you're not going to hear me so feel it out for yourself if there's that little tinge when you're like i gotta do this program but it's actually like a speeding up of if i don't do it it won't be okay it's not the same thing. So take a moment, right? Because some people will say, if you decide in the next 20 minutes, you're going to save 50%. They're trying to make you override <laughs> any awareness that like, this isn't the right fit. So refuse to do that. Be anxious for nothing. Pay double if you need to, but connect with your wisdom first because it will always serve you. It will always lead you to what creates more. So I am not saying like medication is always going to be a self one escape. No, 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 no. I'm saying when you connect with your wisdom, you can know, yep, that surgery is for me. Yep. This is the surgeon to do it. Yep. I'm going to take this medication. You can know because there's clarity. You can't know when you're in self one. Like self one really can't, you know, figure that one out, right? Well, who's the person I should marry? <laughs> or like, what's the thing? Which practitioner should I go to? There's just too many. That's like trying to micromanage your forehand. Oh, wait, how much tension should I have in my triceps to like lower the racket, but still hold some tension in the biceps to counteract that and I don't drop the racket? You can't know because there's like billions and billions of bits of information that would have to be all coordinated at the same time. So I think this is such a great example because it's obvious, like the harder you try, the more you're going to screw it up. If you let go, your body knows how to learn. Self two knows how to learn. Self two knows how to welcome in new possibilities. Self two knows how to like get you to the coffee shop to be exactly online next to the person who hires you for your next job or, that you marry <laughs> and have this like unbelievable synchronicity happen like the synchronicity of 
what happened with Lisa when she's like, Tim Galloway is my uncle. What if I hadn't mentioned his name? And I would have still been like, I gotta find Tim Galloway. I've gotta find him and I work harder. Maybe I'll try this strategy. <laughs> no, I was just in the knowing, enjoy, synchronicity shows up, let it happen because so much more in life will happen for you than what you could make happen for yourself. So for that question about like, what, how do I know if I'm just looking for more clarity and escape or if a program or a practitioner is really serving me? Um, relax your body. So just how, uh, how would it feel to be in my certainty? On a scale of one to 10, how good would it feel to be in my certainty? What would it be like to let the possibilities show up and to choose them? That's self to guidance. And it very well may guide you to a group, a program, a party, uh, go get a cup of coffee. There are lots of uh, options for what it could look like. Good. Oh, sweet girl. This is helpful. I've given up that I could heal myself, that I could heal. And I don't know how to get out of that. I like that I can take baby steps, even though if my belief may not change immediately. Yeah, don't wait for your belief to change. You change. Good, 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 good. Yes, beautiful. And doing the 10 breaths, could things get worse before they get better? This is a big myth in medicine is that as things intensify, they must be getting worse. Big lie, completely untrue. And what I've seen as a physician as very, very often, things will intensify as they are healing. So don't equate with things intensifying, meaning they're getting worse. They're just intensifying. So yes, as you breathe into your fear, into your pain, into your shame, into your despair, fill in the blank into, oh my God, this pain's never gonna go away. I feel hopeless. Who knows what's there? As you breathe into that which was suppressed, it is going to increase, intensify, and move out. It's called expansion. And anything you've suppressed, as it begins to expand, which is to return to light, return to truth, restore well-being, anything you've suppressed as it begins to expand will intensify first. Let it happen. Oh, I'm so triggered by my diagnosis and just hearing the word, how to deal with this. Yeah, there's a lot of conclusions we have with, I have blah, blah, blah. So then look, and therefore, what are you making it mean? Just a state that someone thinks you're in right now. It's a name they have for a space you're in right now. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. But when we make it mean, therefore, I'll always have this. Therefore, there are no solutions. Therefore, I'll be in increasing pain as I go forward and continue to deteriorate. Oh, you better believe it's going to feel heavy because when I mentioned before, Whenever you buy into the lie, it will always feel heavy. Your body is your manifestation tool. It is your access to sense your wisdom. And your wisdom knows none of that crap is true about you. So let go of anything that isn't, that isn't light because it's not going to serve you. <laughs> uh a shift in perspective. How can I get past the deep belief? Sign, signs of healing won't last. Well, so this is what I actually do because oh, signs won't last. Okay, I'm healing, but it won't last. What are you actually feeling is doubt. So I would do the same thing. On a scale of one to 10, how heavy is this doubt? Just awareness. It's all we're doing today because what I've said for years and years and years, awareness is the healer. I have the ABC tool, the instant elevation. I created a whole program, the instant elevation, which is awesome. And if all you did was A, because it's ABC, awareness um, shifts in your breathing, which shifts your physiology. And then C is conscious choice. What most people are teaching is conscious choice. Choose this, do this, try this. Think about that. <laughs> Learn this. Don't just let all of that go. If all you do is A, your whole world will change. Practice awareness. What do I feel like in my body right now? So scale of one to 10, how intense is this doubt? Or if you don't go that deep, you're like, 
oh, I feel uncomfortable. How uncomfortable am I right now? This idea that healing won't last. How bad does that feel? Scale of one to 10. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, so funny. Thanks, you guys, for being here. I'll be here every week at 11 a.m. Mountain for Mind Body TV. Uh, it's recorded. It's in our Facebook community, the, uh, the Mind Body community in Facebook. Uh, we might also be here in YouTube. So certainly subscribe. If you'd like to hit the notification bell, you'll be alerted when I go live or when I post a new video. Um, I'm really, really excited to have you all here from so many countries and sending you so much love. Um, it's time for us to really awaken and begin to listen to what's in us, the wisdom in us, the inner game. Hey, what's happening in here? There's a whole lot of stuff happening out there and it can be really, uh, kind of hook us in. But what if what's out there is a reflection of what's going on in here? And if I want to make change in my world, in my body, in my life, I can create even a micro shift of what's going on in here. So for today, all you're going to practice this week is just take a breath. Hi, body. How are you? And look, I love you. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks to Tim Galway, who's so fabulous and genius, and I'm really excited to have connected with him. I will be here each week. I'm at drkimd.com. You can subscribe there. There's a quiz um, at the top, basically just to give you a little bit of guidance around where to start, some free tools and resources for playing the inner game. Um, and what what we are offering, you know, when I'm live, this is free every week. I'm always really excited to share this. Um, and what else we have going on? The Mind Body Solution for Chronic Fatigue uh, is the newest program we just launched. It's been really, really powerful. We have the second live call for that in a week. Um, and for those of you who do want to work with me live, we have the Embracing Health program starting in June. I'm going to do also a series over the next several weeks, starting in May, um, interviewing people I've worked with so they can share what's possible for pretty much all of them. They felt um, this can't work for me and stumbled and had all kinds of blocks and tried really, really hard to heal and then found like what is actually the thing that creates that shift from self one to self two, so to speak. What is that that really allows the ignition of what's possible for me? So we'll stay tuned for those interviews. We have some really incredible people who've come forward to share their story and we'll have those in Mind Body TV for the month of May. And I look forward to seeing you there live. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>